Polish This is men. Well, hello there. My name is Tim with Mars Go Home, and we need to discuss your fades. And not that sweet haircut you're rocking, but your film fades. Now, usually I see people toss on a dip to black or opacity keyframes and call it a day. Well, today, we're not doing that. Nope, today, we're rocking the cinematic film fade. So a while ago, I was watching this classic film called Johnny Mnemonic. By the way, if anyone wants to give me a crap ton of money to remake this film, hit me up. I realized two things about that last shot. One, Total Recall had a similar end shot, and so did Fight Club. And two, the way the film faded to black wasn't a solid fade. It was dynamic. The film dissipated in the darkness. It had character, almost like it was sinking into a pool of murky water. I did some research and I found a noticeable pattern in all these fades that were shot on film. So I set off into a faraway land to see how I can emulate this effect. So what is a cinematic film fade? Well, to me, it's the old school analog style fades. You see, way back in time, our ancient ancestors discovered that continuously closing the aperture on a film camera while it was running, you'd create this fade out effect. Later, a device called the optical printer would be used. It was most notably used on that Star Wars talkie everyone keeps yapping about for creating mats and blue screen compositing. It combines two pieces of film into one image. You see, the optical printer could be used to create fade outs in post-production also. All it would do is just re-photograph an existing piece of film onto a new negative. And if you progressively dial down the illumination on the optical printer as it runs, you created this fade out effect. Well, when it comes to current day NLEs like Premiere, slapping your trusty old cross dissolve or dip to black or opacity keyframes presents us with a few issues. Your standard dip to black transition treats all the pixel values as the same, effectively fading each pixel out simultaneously, giving us a flat two dimensional fade. The brightness values are equal across the board. Now, this is fine in most cases, but if you're looking to add that coveted film look, then we're gonna have to figure out how we can digitally adjust the aperture in post. After Effects to be precise, but this method should transfer to other programs like Fusion as well. Now, with the aperture style fade, it uses the frame's exposure to determine what fades first and what fades last, like in this example. All right, we're in After Effects now, and this effect was pretty damn easy to figure out. Let me do a quick RAM preview here, and I'll show you exactly what I came up with. As you can see, the darkness values start fading first, leaving the brighter values last, which is exactly what I was looking for. So let's dive in to see how we can recreate this from scratch. We're gonna take our footage here, and we're just gonna drop it into a new composition. Since we're working with color and brightness values, to minimize the color banding, this works best in 16-bit. If you don't know how to change that, just hover over the 16-bit here in the project panel, hold down Alt and left click and just cycle until you get to the 16-bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our footage and we're gonna name this one Luma. And this will give you a hint exactly of what we're gonna be doing here. We're gonna be turning this into a Luma mat. Next, we're going to come down to our original footage here and we're going to set it the track mat to Luma Mat. If you don't see your track mat column here, just peruse yourself on down to the bottom of the timeline panel and just toggle switches and modes until you see it. All right, let's set the visibility of the Luma Mat and just solo it. A Luma Mat politely asked After Effects to use the brightness or the luminance of the top layer as a mask for the bottom layer. Kind of like a virtual optical printer combining two pieces of film into one. Oh, how's that for a callback? Okay. <clears throat> so to turn this footage into a Luma mat, we need to turn it into a black and white image. And the easiest way of doing that is going to our effects and presets panel and just slapping a tint effect on it. Look at that. Awesome. The next effect we need to put on there is a levels effect. And we'll be bouncing back and forth, adjusting this throughout. What I like to do is I like to take the input black and squeeze it in, just pinching it in just a little bit. And if we look at our scopes, I would like to have it just smash the floor 
just barely smashing it. And if you don't have your scopes pulled up here, you can go to Window, then Lumetri Scopes. Lu Lu Lumetri? Lumetri? Lumetri Scopes! <sighs> Whatever, I'm an idiot. So let's smash it to the bottom of the floor here. Okay. Yeah. Now we're gonna go to our input white value and we're gonna pinch that in just a little bit too until it just gently hugs the ceiling. Looks like Mount Everest a little bit here. All right. The output black. We're gonna squeeze that in just a bit. And we'll be dancing with these values throughout because the following effect will drive the actual fade in and fade out effect or transition. And that is the exposure effect. And this is going to act like our aperture opening and closing. So what we need to do is we need to open up this aperture until the whole thing is completely white, like a nuclear holocaust. Slide the exposure up until it's completely white. Holding down shift will cycle through this a little bit faster. And we need to smash this to the top of the scope. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our five second mark and we're gonna set a keyframe and let's just make a five second fade. Then come over to the 10 second mark and we're gonna just do the opposite. Now we want complete darkness, like Artax and never ending story. Artax! Just let the sadness consume you. You're letting the sadness of the swamps get to you. I swear to God, if you didn't cry during that part of the film, I don't know if we can be friends. Artax! That automatically sets a keyframe. Now we go from complete white and now the Aperture is completely closed. Darkness. But nothing grows stronger. Now let's unsolo this layer and hide the visibility of it. And now, as you can see what it's happening, this can be a cool effect. If you put footage underneath it, it can reveal it. You can put another Luma footage underneath this one and have it fade in as this one fades out. You can do some really cool transition with this, but right now we're just gonna focus on the fade to black and now, for it to go to black, we need to create a solid black layer underneath it. So let's drag this underneath. Let's do a RAM preview and see what we got here. And it's pretty easy to do. Now just for fun, I will package up this little preset and uh, you can download it. So you can hit the ground running pretty quickly. But I'm not done yet! Now this piece of footage is 8-bit drone footage. I want to show you real quick what footage with more dynamic range can produce. And this will really utilize the Luma Mat and the 16-bit workflow. Here is some red 8K footage and it has some very super basic color grading on it. Uh, nothing special. Like before, let's duplicate it, name it, and set the Luma mat. Now, as I was getting ready to release this, After Effects 2023 came out and they changed the way we work with track mats. And it's freaking awesome. If we hover our mouse over these little boxes next to the track mat, it'll let us know what mode we're on. Like before, we want Luma mat. On a side note, you can now pick whip this track mat to other footage and use it in multiple spots. And now, if we move this layer around, it will always be tied to the selected layer, like a toxic lover. It's good to see you, sweetheart! You contemptible pig. Moving on. We're going to speed up this process up a little bit, so I'll just slap on the package preset I made called MGH Film Fade. Link in the description, or you can build your own. Let's solo this Luma layer real quick and dial in the mat. As you can see, keyframes are already been set, so let's just tap U on the keyboard and just delete them and zero out the exposure. As I said, every piece of footage will be different and you can see with this footage, the levels are completely different. Here is where we need to dance around a bit with the levels effect. Like before, we need to find where the exposure is completely open and blown out and then find out where it's completely closed. This will be a fade in effect, so let's start with it off. 
move a few frames up and open that baby up. Drop the solid background behind it and toy around with the levels just to get it to your liking. I tossed a slight blur on the mat to help it blend in a bit and it's not necessary and you can turn it off or pump it all the way up and get some nifty little dreamy effect. Do what you want. It's your life to live, so live it. And the, another thing I like to do here is I like to take the darkest part of the frame and sample that with a fill effect on the background. So just kind of balance it on. That's mainly just for taste. So hopefully this doesn't exceed the data allotment of 320 gigabytes for your mnemonic brain. And until next time, stay rad, stay cool, stay creative. <laughs>